Okay, so welcome to Net Support Insights. I'm so excited to be joined by the co-CEO and co-founder <laughs> of the Global Equality Collective, Nick Ponsford. And then we've also got Al Kingsley joining us for this one as well. Hello. Wait, who, who's Al? Uh, well, I'm the Corner CEO of Net Support, yeah. but I kind of do lots of things in education. But I'm just here for, uh, well, just to join the fun, have a conversation. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I'll wear too many hats, so we won't list everything out of us. We'll be here forever. So tell us about what you've been doing. Then. Oh, well, it's been very exciting because this week we've now launched our student module. Woo! So we started with our platform looking at intersectionality and staff cultures, and mm. after 18 months, of research with goldsmiths, 50 primary schools, secondary schools, nursery, student councils, teachers working with software team. We launched it on Monday. Oh. And we are the first way we can look at intersectionality in education. Which very is very exciting. See how kids feel safe at school mm. and then work out which groups they're in, mm. about culture, about representation, asking them you know, if they've missed time off school, can they, mm. are they proud of school? Do they like learning? Are they happy at school? So mm. kind of the whole 360 for students now. Amazing. So it's really exciting. So what are some of the things that you're hoping to get from it? I think trying to understand the voices of our more marginalized students. Mm. I think there's a lot that's happened in the last few years where attendance is a real issue. Kids aren't feeling safe. There's a lot of phobic uh, beliefs in education and staff don't really know where to start or yeah. where that get that expertise and and we think we start by asking the students but that's that's hard to ask yeah. students their opinion and so what we were able to use is use the technology to do it and make it easy for schools to do it very quickly um, and then we've got our global quality collective that help with like that inbuilt coaching so we help schools you know work out what they do in a way that is in you know best interest of the children and led by them as well mm. so we're really excited to see how it's going to develop. Yeah, I'm interested in it with all the research. Have we been asking the wrong questions? I think we have. I mean, really interesting talking to the students. That some of them said that they have surveys where they're asked about questions about the school canteen and if they've been bullied. Now, if you mm. imagine doing a kind of well-being survey yourself about your canteen and like maybe frictions with the line manager, and then what tends to happen with the surveys is organisations don't give the kids feedback. They, so a lot of students were saying, we do these surveys and then we don't know what happens with our data. Yeah. We haven't really consented to do that. So we've looked at all the kind of issues around ethics and consent to do with it as well. Looked what other, because at the moment um, we get surveys either by big organisations which are related to kind of like DFE data, or we have surveys that schools write. And actually we've worked with clinical psychologists to understand the language you use, the speed you ask questions. So it's been really, really interesting mm. just taking something like a school survey and working out how can we utilize technology to do it, but actually what is that user experience? So I think there's a lot of learning how we can listen to students and capture their voice better. Um, I mean, we're starting, we've got a pilot of about 30 schools we're gonna run it with where they're gonna help us co-design and feedback on it. So, but this is that first, pitch out there which is yeah. I'm really excited to see where it's going to go I'm really excited no, no, I was like, one of the things that always stands out for you good folks is it's all about the evidence isn't it yeah. it's about evidence informed yeah. research that's it it's not about let's try it and see what the result is it's very much about let's get it right first which Absolutely. I think it really underpins the quality of what you do Oh, yeah, thank you, so Al. That means a lot. It's very authentic, and it's very, like you said, very evidence-driven, which is so important. Well, it's what it needs. I mean, I was a, t I was a teacher, and I was a school leader, and, you know, I mean, being here at BET, you see the technology that's on offer, um, but it's how schools can have ownership of that. Yeah. Um, and actually, I think when it comes to that data, mm. in this country, like, following on from COVID, the big organisations that we see here at BET have the data, have our information. And when you look at other countries, like Spain, I was having a conversation earlier, parents are starting to question, you know, why, have we, why are we giving that data to you? Like, how do we have more ownership and challenge in schools? And I think that challenge now, schools in the UK will start to ask, actually, who owns this data? Like, yeah. And that's where we're hoping the way that we're co-designing and learning um, you know, we work with Goldsmiths on this as well, as well as our software team, having that kind of join up conversation from different experts trying to achieve the same thing has been like really illuminating. So it's, um, yeah. yeah, I think 
I think when you pull out simple things that we've done in education for a long time and then zap it with a bit of technology yeah. and then take, you know, a kind of a bit more of an aerial view on it, it's, it's really interesting to see where the next hundred years of formalised education is going to go, I think, and what we can do to really help that sense oh, of inclusion and belonging. I really do. Yeah. I really do. And I think you're right. You've said before a few times that technology has the potential to be like the best equaliser of our time. And Absolutely. it does if we utilise it in the right way. Yeah. I mean, yeah. with another hat, I'm doing a DfE, Assistable Technology Pilot at the moment. Mm. And the interest from schools, I mean, we've got 150 signed up, but thousands. Yeah. Um, and and I think in education, we've technology has been seen as, as a COVID response. And there's confidence, but there's not the risk taking. Yes, there's not the yeah, kind exactly, of yeah, critical yeah. aspect of what are we using technology for. Mm. And I think as people become more confident and start challenging it, that's where we'll build better tech that actually takes us forward for what learning is going to be like mm. in the future. I had the pleasure of being on a panel literally about 20 minutes, half an hour ago, yeah. uh, around the OECD's vision of human flourishing. Wow. Um, and that move from that kind of ranking we have, we've had with the PISA rankings around the world, that a high performing school system is one where children acquire the following qualifications. Yep. And actually what we want to do is focus on the fact that we know technology and AI will change the jobs landscape, the future place we live in. But actually human flourishing is about our resilience, our mental yeah, health, absolutely, our yeah. ability to appreciate wonder and awe, yeah. our communication skills, our digital skills. Yeah. And actually moving from, can we measure an education system where a child comes out rounded, resilient, yeah. robust, mm -hmm. engaged, and wanting to learn more, not I'm done with it and never again. Yeah. Yeah. How we encapsulate that in measure, I don't know. But yeah. all the things that you're doing are all fundamental to supporting the whole person, aren't they? Yeah, yeah but that's what we try to do. And I think, you know, there's a reflection that we are the first sort of generation that has this digital technology as educators. We're learning how it can be used. Yeah. So, you know, we're really, I mean, you know, everyone here, we're really pioneering what this landscape's going to look like. We don't know what's going to sit, we're not, we don't know where it's going to go, but I think society as well understand it with that sort of intersectionality, with that inclusion and belonging sense of what it is to be productive and when. We've got now, you know, flexible working. We know that, you know, not everyone is extroverted and social. People are productive at different times of the day yeah. in different ways. I think as that moves and we prepare that future skill set, there's going to be that conflict, there's going to be these discussions and that's where it's at really and working out, you know, the challenge of how do we get it right for every single person. Mm. So it's a challenge, but I think the yeah. opportunities are incredible of what we'll be looking at, you know, like in five years time at bet, in 10 years. I mean, Absolutely, seeing the yeah. esports, which is very much here this year yeah. and how colleges are embracing that as a way mm. of not only just engaging students but those skills that you're saying Al as well that collaboration those skills that they will need for that future of work mm. I got a stitch just watching these sports so that's me out <laughs> well, you um, say that you did really well in our warm-up yesterday well, um who was it that we had to come and do the warm-up we did we had the name Tansy slipped TV Tansy TV our, yeah uh, they're normally aimed at primary children as yeah. part of a small mm. premium getting them up on Active at the start we were doing it. Day. We were doing we carrot jumps, yes. carrot jumps, and, and tomato some, rolls. And... Workout just to get the, <laughs> the system going. And it did help wake us up. It, it did. Yeah. yeah. So I was paying the price later in the day, but it was yeah. all good to get us going. <laughs> It was great. So, yeah, that, that's really important as well. I think like that, like physical health, mental health, all these things coming together, really yeah. important for our children. And I really hope that when you get some data back from your schools, mm. that you'll share it with us in oh, Rise, because I, I would love to publish some of that and yeah, no, have I'd some discussions to. around that as yeah. well. Yeah, I think it'll be really interesting. So, mm. yeah, I'd, yeah, I'd love yeah. that. Thank you. Brilliant. Well, thanks for talking week. to Thank us. You. Yeah, Thank and good you. luck with the launch. Thank you. Thank you.